Ralph Adams Cram was an American writer and architect. He was born in 1863 in Hampton Falls, New Hampshire, the son of William Augustine Cram and Sarah Elizabeth Blake, educated at Westwood Academy and Phillips Exeter Academy. In 1881, he moved to Boston to work at the architectural office of Roch and Tilden. Between 1885 and 1887, he was art critic for the Boston Transcript. Cram went into business as an architect in 1889 forming Cram and Wentworth, a business that would grow and change its name many times when someone died or someone new stepped in. The company designed the United States Military Academy at West Point, and Cram personally worked on the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York, among many other churches. In 1900, he married Elizabeth Carrington Reed. In 1936, Cram argued the United States would be better off under a constitutional monarchy in his Invitation to Monarchy in the American Mercury. After his conversion to Anglo-Catholicism, Cram co-founded the American branch of the Society of King Charles the Martyr, meaning Charles I of England. He died in 1942 in Boston. Today, we will review his 1895 Black Spirits in White. Most of the stories following the first two revolve around the unnamed narrator and his friend Tom, who have a tendency of getting close to horribly dying from some unnatural cause on a regular basis. Number 252 Rue Monsieur Le Prince has the narrator meet his friend Eugene in Paris in 1886 after he inherited the house of his own to the infamous witch Madame Blais de Tartas, to the chagrin of Sarto de Vieja, the self-styled King of the Sorcerers, who proceeds to curse the place after taking everything not nailed down. When Eugene the narrator and a pair of French doctors come to sleep over at the place, they find strange rooms with a huge black altar of stone and a giant red figure glaring at them from the wall of the dome painted impossibly huge. As they all go to sleep, the narrator is beset upon by a gelatinous apparition that tries to suck his knife away and he is taken away to the hospital not a moment too early. In Cropsburg Keep, as a man and his friend decide to sleep in the ruins of a castle, where a German baron invited all his friends over 40 years ago just to burn them to death, before hanging himself in a medieval suit of armour, his body swinging in his metal casing for 12 years before disappearing. Then, when the narrator goes to sleep, he is awakened by the Count, who takes him to a hall full of charred and bloated corpses dancing to his amusement and wishes him to partake as well. In the White Villa, the narrator and Tom miss the last train while overseeing some ruins in Italy, so they rough it out in a miserable bandit village inside of an old fort. Only the narrator is witness to the supernatural reenactment of a centuries-old murder, which does dampen his hope for sleep a bit. Sister Madalena has a cavalier invite the narrator and his friend Tom to his house in an old convent. Anne admits there is a ghost about the place, but it doesn't do anything, and he didn't have mass set for it because of superstition? For the ghost he knows is real and saw himself? Anyway, despite this leap in logic, they discover the story of an unwilling novice who was forced by the superior to die to avoid being forced to sit tied and gagged to watch a lover climb to a window before being hurled to his death, the manner of her death being the reason for her constant complaint of not being able to sleep after death. Notre Dame de Ou concerns Eloise, a young woman who, trapped one night in an ancient crumbling church, must sing until dawn to the madman who, after murdering her brother, tried to slit her throat. In the Dead Valley, a Swedish man tells the story of how, as a boy, he and his friend wandered through a fog-ridden valley, utterly bereft of life, from which came a booming, horrid, disembodied scream where nothing could live. On the whole, these are quite masterful, especially in Cropsburg Keep. 